hello friends welcome back to the channel today we're going to embark on a journey <laughs> of building and a web application which definitely you know it already a flight reservation project now this quite a huge project so we're going to take it bit by bit until we complete it i'm not sure whether we can complete everything but well we're going to do something now I have published a, um, details or description of this project um, so maybe we can go in and see what we're going to be doing here so that is a blog spot for Netcode Hub and I'll leave this link in the video description so you can read it yourself and see what we're going to be doing now understanding the flight reservation basics we have about three or four features that we're going to build on um, we have I think there are four right two or two three and four yes so for the first one that's going to be an interface for search flight uh, we're going to have a back end definitely it's going to be a web api as well now if you check here you see user input departure and destination cities and uh, travel date and, uh, and etc so you can make a search and also application queries available uh, flight and displays results with pricing duration stops and and the airplane or the airline details okay so that's going to be the first feature so from there we're going to have another feature always going to be a select flight so when the user select flight what it's going to do it can just um, fill in enter passenger details and confirm bookings and in case there's a, a payment he can make it or other way around then we have the next feature of ticket um, issuance we're going to provide an e-ticket which will be sent to the person's email um, email account and also we we that ticket include the booking reference the uh, flight details and other passenger information we are actually going to summarize the whole thing so when we pick the booking reference or the booking we're going to summarize and um, return uh, important aspects the same thing applies to the flight details and also the passenger details. So we're going to create a third session and include this um, um, simple as a ticket issuance. Then maybe user can go in there and to manage the bookings. You can decide to cancel the flight based on the airline um, schedules and policies, right? Uh, maybe after making payments, we decide to cancel. We have to refund and all. Uh, no, this is quite <laughs> huge but we're going to try to build something so we can know how we can integrate all this stuff in and in and out okay then check in uh, so user can also check in to um, select a seat so we're going to provide available seats and now the unavailable ones the number of seats that we have in that plane we're going to uh, make them available so user can go in there and now choose a seat and uh, make it his own okay then we have the feature of boarding so here we're going to provide a boarding pass is such as the same as the ticket which will be sent to the user so he can present it um, um, for flight boarding now this boarding pass uh, will be um, attached to the ticket so we send a ticket then we send a boarding pass because um, that is what you're going to be using so user uh, they can check confirm this user through the boarding pass and this boarding pass could be as an, an a specific uh, tag an id a specific uh, qr code whatever which encapsulates the ticket and also um details of the airline okay so maybe when it gets to the airport <laughs> our our virtual airport we can scan <laughs> with an uh, um, code scanner then we're going to get all the features here so maybe we'll try to integrate a QR code which would be used as a boarding pass. So we're not going to provide anything. It's just a code that is needs to present it um, at the airport for um, identification. Yes, we're going to attach that to the ticket. Okay, so when it comes to the high level architecture for this flight reservation, we're going to have the front end. And you know, since we are Blazor, <laughs> we are Blazor developers, we're going to be using Blazor as a front end. It might be WebAssembly, and that's what I am hoping for. WebAssembly, since we're going to build an API, we want to have a separate um, WebAssembly for that. And definitely, is that going to be .NET 8 or .NET 9? Uh, we can use one of them then with that we're going to have a, a flight can be searched we're going to have a form to search for flight we're going to have a filter form user can make um, filter the search uh, etc 
Then we're gonna have account management user can decide um, to update the login, can cancel flight. All of this should be um, orchestrated by the, the front end. So we're gonna have these features as a UI that user can uh, do all stuff and then payment as well. Whether you wanna call PayPal or Stripe payment after payment, we're gonna have um, a redirection to our page to give an information and we should handle that with the front end. Well, then let's hop into the back end. Definitely we're gonna be using .NET 9 <laughs> Web API. And also I thought of it of including one GRPC service. Definitely it's gonna be for authentication. Yeah, so I've made a video on that. If you haven't checked it, well, you know, building GRPC service is quite different from um, Web API. <laughs> okay, so I've made a video on that. So if you haven't checked that one, you can go in there and now make yourself uh, familiar with that. Or you can also stick to this because here I'm going to make it uh, clear to you as well. Then, with the key responsibilities of the back end, what I'm going to do is going to handle airline management. You know, before you can schedule, you need to have the airline, let's say the airplane, you need to have the details, the, 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 the number, date manufactured, because all, the, all these we need, all, the, all of uh, information about this. And also, for booking logic and transactions, we need to also keep track of them, definitely in a database then storing the user and unbooking data securely we can also do that and the last part here which is the most important thing is manage authentication as far as user is concerned authentication and authorization is quite important so we should make sure that the users our users are secured with um, a perfect match authentication system and you know if you're talking about database we can go for a lot of databases and which is going to be an sql server postgres and 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 a whole lot okay so when there is uh, I'll consider using SQL Server and maybe we can also integrate Postgres. It's quite similar. We can use that as so our MongoDB um, as we can also do it. Then, that's what the database is going to store. User input, flight details and schedules and also the booking and our payment. We're not actually going to store exact payments. Let's say with the payment, since we're going to integrate a third party, um, after the payment has been made, we want to get some information and install it in there. At a reference okay so that's what we're going to do so maybe you can go here and now uh, we're going to follow along with all the features which have been introduced here with the type of technology that we're going to be using so i was wondering how i can relate a database so i was going through online to check whether we have a eld or entity relation database similar to what we're going to be doing and i found that from this um i think javascript uh, java uh, point.com with this so i also leave the link right there so you can also check what we're going to be doing i quite i think it's quite similar to this so when you check here you can see we are having let me zoom it we are having a database designed for airline reservation system and that is exactly what we're going to be doing <laughs> so the same now a user over here has all the details it might be that uh, some of these are going to be removed others are going to be added but a user is going to have some properties over here aside so from that user is going to have um, a login definitely and this before logging and after logging in we must have rules now with this what i have planned here is you know this system is not going to be managed by administrator and now users only so uh, i am also adding um claim based authorization so that um administrator can assign uh, claims you know row is a subset of claims right so um although if you are a user you have a user role you can also be assigned whether you can edit or you can update if you're a manager you can also do that and so forth i have i did the same thing in the inventory management system so if you have ever watched that video then you understand what i am talking about but if you are not clear here then don't worry when we get there step by step you're going to grab this then um, for management um, user can manage its own account i think so user can decide to update its information but here what you want to focus here about here is the main thing of the administrator the management let's say the administration level they can manage the airline bookend as well because user can also cancel that a cancelled um, a booking and administrators can also cancel that it could be delegated to managers whoever then we're going to have passenger and a whole lot we're going to also have a ticket which is going to rebound to user so user is having a ticket and now a ticket we have the ticket details it might be that you're not going to maintain this we can 
um just remove some and also add another one then we have this airline booking that is so you need to provide the details um of that specific user and also with the airline itself before you can um, book this so this is quite similar to what we're going to be doing by i'm showing you this so you can get the the overview of what we're going to be doing how these relations have been established between the entities and other type of properties that each entity is going to have okay good now um when you check my youtube channel you can see i do have another um what you can see i have another channel here that's dot blazer now with this channel i it has been quite long i posted video but i think i wanted to bring it to life so from today going i'll be making dot net videos on it and now the videos that i will post on this channel will not be the same as this each channel is going to have a different video so if you are subscribed to this then i think it is good that you also subscribe to that so you can get a notification as well as soon as i do post a new content on this channel i want to make it as a, as the way this is also going i don't want to leave this behind so let's put things together and i'll make this also <laughs> alive again all right so don't don't forget to subscribe to this just come to the channel and i can just come in there and I'll give it um you can click on this to subscribe okay you know when you check my channel you can see i have a lot of projects um employee management system and also an e-commerce uh, project created now with all these if you check the episodes uh, one episode could last for about um more than an hour right so i have thought about this and i've thought about you watching this with this uh, time so i want to make it like 30 minutes for an episode what do you think about that is it okay to you let me know so i can i can um, scatter things and make it work i want to make it short so you can follow along all the time that is a plan that i'm having for you but you are the consumer <laughs> so let me know what do you think do you want to stick to the old one or what i'm suggesting here is best for you put it in the comment section so that i will know what to do when recording the initial project so maybe uh, you might be thinking if today is the first time of you watching a video from this and actually want to tackle a project like this you're asking yourself what are the prerequisites of this and all that you need here is you must have a basic of c-sharp well and also blazer and um it's, this project is for everyone even when you have the interest of learning you can also partake in this and um, i'm going to make things simple clear and visible to you so you can follow along and by the end you should be able to um, do something similar to this after we are done with the project i'll make sure the project will be available um the source code but at least you're going to pay a token for the source code in case you want to get a complete project source code now each episode is going to talk about a different thing and so i i suggest that you watch them accordingly so you can grab the context from start to finish and if you have any question to this uh, you can put it in the um, comment section below if you have a featured um, let's say a suggestion that you want us to include it maybe it could be a feature it could be anything you can also put it in there because this project is going to be a broad one so by and by we're going to tackle that bit by bit and um, if it works out we can also integrate your suggestions as well all right so um that is it for today this video is just a quick one to introduce you to the project now stay tuned for the next one that is where we're going to start that red gem as usual if you haven't subscribed to this channel as well then you know you are missing a lot then do not forget to subscribe you can also give this video a thumbs up when you do that it actually helps this channel have this video so reach wider audience and and, and i'll be glad for that Stay tuned for the next one. Till then, take care.